Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for coming to our presentation. I'm Aya. I'm Ai. And I'm Chikako. By the way, do you know much about Japanese history? No. Our topic is Japanese history. So let's go back to the past. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> First, I will tell you about amazing historical buildings. Next, I will tell you about wonderful culture in the Heian period. <laughs> Finally, Chikako will tell you about vivid and stylish art in the Edo period, Ukiyo-e. Let's enjoy the time travel. Now that we finished our introduction, Let's travel to the amazing historical buildings. There are many historical buildings in Japan. Actually, the number is so high, they can't be counted. Also, they have a long history. Today, I'd like to talk about three main kinds of historical buildings in Japan. First, I'll talk about castles. Second, I will tell you about the temples and shrines. Finally, I will share with you about the Imperial Palace in Tokyo. Let's move on to the first topic. First, Japan, Japan has have many historical, many important castles. The oldest castle is Inuyama Castle. The castle was built in 5037. On the other hand, the newest castle is Matsuyama Castle, which was built in 1854. Today, there are 200 castles in Japan. Among them, there are 12 castle towers remaining. About 3,000 castles were built from the Sengoku period to the beginning, beginning of the Edo period. This shows that there were many wars in that era. There are three types of locations, three types of castles. Castle on mountains are impregnable castles. Castle on plains are easy to accommodate soldiers, and it's easy to make castle towns near them. Castle on plains have these conveniences. Himeji Castle is one of Castle on Flat Mountains. And World Heritage Site, it is very white and beautiful. It took eight years to build, and 24 million people helped build Himeji Castle. It was not damaged by the war and the modern disasters. Second, shrines and temples are also amazing historical buildings in Japan. When people enter a shrine, people bow in front of the gate called the Tori. Tori separates God's world from our world, so people hold greetings to come to the world of God and enter. In this way, shrines have many rules. Shrines also had a rank system that was established by Japanese government in the Meiji period. But the system was abolished in 1946. However, people still remember it. The top ranking shrines are at Isejingu. There are 125 shrines at Isejingu. And its area is roughly the same size as Paris. Can you believe it? No. Thank you. <laughs> On the other hand, Sanju Sangendo is a famous temple in Japan. Measuring 120 meters, a temple hall is a large and has wooden statues of 1,000 armed cannon Buddha <laughs> that are flanked on each side by human-sized statues standing in 10 rows. By the way, the difference between shrines and temples are related to 
religion, appearance, and manner of worship. Temples are related to Buddhism. Shrines are related to Shintoism. In addition, there is a statue of Buddha in a temple. And it is a place where the monk lives. The place where the god of Japan lives is a shrine. Finally, the Imperial Palace in Tokyo also has great historical importance. People usually want to go there because it's mysterious. The current Imperial Palace is located on the former site of Edo Castle. A large park area surrounded by moats and the massive stone walls in the center of Tokyo. Edo Castle used to be the seat of the Tokugawa shogunate who ruled Japan from 1603 until 1867. In 1868, the shogunate was overthrown and the country's capital and the imperial legends were built from Kyoto to Tokyo. The palace was once destroyed during World War II and rebuilt in the same style afterwards. The, the inner grounds of the palace, usually not open to the public, only on January 2nd, New Year's greeting, and on December 23rd, Emperor's birthday, visitors are able to enter there and see the members of the imperial family who make several public appearances on the balcony. In conclusion, there are many historical buildings in Japan, and each building has a long history. Also, there are lots of shrines and temples in various places. Now, Japanese historical buildings attract people, and they will continue to be fascinating in the future. Thank you for listening. Next, my co-presenter, Ai, will tell you about wonderful culture in the Heian period. Thank you, Aya. That was interesting. Good evening again. Thank you for attending this presentation. My name is Ai Tanigawa. Today, I would like to talk about wonderful culture in the Heian period. So, let's go back to the Heian period. <laughs> <laughs> the Heian period was in 794 to 1185. The Heian period was named after the main city in the period, Heian Kyo. By the way, can you imagine the people's life and culture over 1,000 years ago? No. Oh, me neither. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Japanese original culture was founded by a lot of people in the past. The culture in the Heian period was absolutely wonderful. There are three, there are three amazing and interesting features of the culture in the Heian period. First, I will talk about lifestyle of the nobility in the Heian period. After that, I will introduce pastimes, and finally, I will tell you about clothing. Let's move on to the first topic. Lifestyle of the nobility in the Heian period was truly unique. Nobility ate meals twice a day, in the early morning and evening. They ate very healthy food, such as vegetables and fruits. Sometimes they ate fish, but they didn't eat meat. Pe people drank alcohol when they have a party, but they didn't drink it every day. The qualities of beautiful women is very different from the present, and it is absolutely amazing. Ladies were proud of their truly long and straight hair. 
<laughs> beautiful and long glossy hair was a symbol of the beauty in the Heian period. Also, a fair skin and plump body was beautiful to them. The proposal of marriage is very interesting. When a man has a proposal to a woman, he makes a poem to her. And the poem was like a love letter, so it was very important to have great sense. <laughs> <laughs> In ordinary circumstances, women never make a proposal to a man. Men could get married at age 15 years old and up. Women could get married at age 13 years old and up. It was so young, wasn't it? Yes. yes. Next, I will talk about pastimes in the Heian period. I will focus on Hentsugi, Kemari, and the Tale of Genji. Hentsugi is a Chinese character guessing game to make up a perfect character by matching up by matching up the given elements. This game was like card game concentration. This game was a wonderful way to study kanji. Kemari is a game to kick a ball like lifting. <laughs> this game was common for the nobility man, and they enjoyed it very much. People couldn't use their hand during the game, so it was like soccer. <laughs> <laughs> the Tale of Genji is the most famous literary work in Japan, and it was written by a court lady named Murasaki Shikibu. She wrote it in the early years of the 11th century, and it is a love story, and the main character is very handsome boy, Genji. <laughs> Next, I will talk about clothing. The clothing people were, people were during the Heian period was absolutely gorgeous. Men wore sock tie, and it was a traditional formal coat dress. They wore it when they go to work or a party. When they wore it, they have kanmuri, and it was a hat in the Heian period. Women wore juni hitoe, and it was a layered kimono. They put on five or more layers, so it was so heavy. If I lived in the Heian period, I wouldn't wear it. How about you? <laughs> they did their best to appeal their best sense with seasonable color combinations. The typical layering of seasonable colors was important for court ladies. For example, white dress trimmed with Japanese red apricot color was a winter dress. Green dress trimmed with maple color was an autumn dress. Red dress trimmed with pine color was all season dress because pine needles are always green so this dress can be used for any auspicious occasion, such as New Year's Day. People's clothing in the Heian period was absolutely gorgeous. In, in conclusion, some of our fantastic culture and tradition was created in the Heian period. The Japanese culture was passed down by our ancestors. Lifestyle in the Heian period was very unique. Past times was absolutely amazing. Clothing was very gorgeous and colorful. Japanese history and culture is absolutely wonderful. So I am proud of it, and I should pass it down to next generation. Thank you for listening. <laughs> now, you know much about the culture in the Heian period. Next, my co-presenter, Chikako, will talk about ukiyo-e in Edo period. Thank you, Ai. That was interesting. 
Next, let's go back to the other period and learn about vivid and stylish art in the other period, ukiyo-e. Do you know much about the other period? The Edo period is known as the longest and the most peaceful period in Japanese history. Also, in this time, many kinds of culture and art warmed up among the common people and gave big effects even to our life today. In my presentation, I'd like to explain the background of the Edo period and one of the most popular art forms in Edo period, ukiyo-e, and I'll introduce two famous ukiyo-e painters. First of all, I'll tell you some basic information of the Edo period. The Edo period lasted from 1603 to 1868. The Edo period lasted from over two centuries. It's a really long period, isn't it? Yeah. In this time, the Japanese capital moved from Kyoto to Edo. Edo is today's Tokyo. And also, Tokugawa shogunate managed the people and the country cleverly. That's why we called it Edo period or Tokugawa period. Tokugawa shogunate closed Japan because they were in control of their country's trading. This isolation improved individual development of culture and art in the Edo period. In addition, Japan had a class society. This, class, this system is similar to past European class society. The common people were divided four different levels of society. Samurai, farmers, artisans, and tradesmen. However, they only could enjoy equally art. Let's move on to the Let's move on to ukiyo-e art, which was especially popular among the common people. Ukiyo-e is kind of wood block printing. Usually, ukiyo-e made by three people, painter, carver, and printer. Ukiyo-e ukiyo artists made ukiyo-e with fine techniques. For example, they showed pieces of people's single hairs. Sorry, can you do that? No. no. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> also, they used clear, vivid colors to print ukiyo-e. Ukiyo means the floating world. It's referred to the belief pleasure of life and the fleeting nature of life and the philosophy of enjoying. That's why ukiyo-e modeled after moments of people's daily life and popular things among the common people, like beautiful women, famous kabuki actors, and monsters. Ukiyo-e modeled up, sorry, Ukiyo-e played a role of bromide picture for the people in the other period. I've talked to you about the Ukiyo-e, and now I'm going, I'm going to introduce and compare two famous ukiyo painters, Hiroshige Utagawa and Hokusai Katsushika. They were rival painters each other. First, Hiroshige Utagawa worked as a firefighter until he became a painter. His art composition is really technical and dynamic. Also, his blue color, which called Hiroshige Blue, was really vivid and unique blue color. This is Hiroshige Blue. His masterpiece is the 53 station of the Tokaido. Also, his painting is really emotional. Look at this picture. So we can imagine the story of painting when we see his painting. He was really good at expressing the people's emotion. Next, Hokusai Katsushika was addicted to painting. He always tried to draw new things and sometimes he tried to foreign style of paintings. That's why his painting is very valuable and unique. Also, his paintings are really logical. Look at this picture. He tries 
two triangle shape in these paintings. This mountain shape and this triangle shape. His masterpiece is 36 views of Mount Fuji. He was really good at drawing the wave of the ocean. This is the most famous ukiyo-e in the world, which is called a great wave. It's a really great wave, isn't it? Yes. Both of these painters gave big effects on foreign painters like Van Gogh and Monet. Also, these two painters uh, sparked Japanese in Europe. The foreign painters try to imitate these, these painters' artworks, like this picture. Recently, there are many parodies of these painters' paintings, like this picture. <laughs> it means they are still popular among the lot of people. In conclusion, the Edo period culture developed uniquely and individually. And ukiyo-e was, ukiyo was popular among the common people in the Edo period. And also, two great ukiyo -e painters sparked Japanese in Europe, and they were still popular around the world. I think we should protect this, protect this totally amazing artworks and I'm proud of this awesome artworks being Japanese. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Did you enjoy the time travel? Yes. We are glad to hear that. In conclusion, Japanese culture is profound heritage and Japanese tradition is inherited from our ancestors and also, Japanese arts have various features in each period. We hope you are interested in Japanese history and culture through this time travel. Thank you, Thank you for listening. listening.